Hi there. In this video, I'm just going to do a little drive um, around a little area which covers a variety of roads and traffic conditions. I'm going to give you a little commentary drive as I go along and a few hints and tips along the way. Hope you enjoy. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm just looking, I'm parked up on the right-hand side of the road. Um, I'm just going to wait. There's a car just coming from ahead, as you can see there, just passing me now. It now looks clear ahead. There's a blue car, but it's a good distance away. I'm going to throw a quick indicator on, check my left blind spot, get onto my side of the road before the blue car arrives. There we go. Okay. Up to gear two, oh, there's a car just poking out there, just easing off the gas there to allow it through. Now I've got a meeting traffic situation here. I'm just gonna nudge in on the left for this car coming through. There we go. Quick check of my sensor right and my blind spot, and off I go. The reason I waited there, it was a meeting traffic situation. There were cars parked on both sides of the road, which generally doesn't give an obvious priority to either me or the oncoming car. So, took it upon myself there, just to pull in, safe option, is to let the other car through in that scenario. Because you can't always guarantee what the other driver is going to do. Okay, now as you can see, just coming up to a speed bump, just eased off my gas pedal just as I went over it. The road that I'm in is a 20 mile an hour zone, so I'm going to increase my speed to 20, sort of in between the speed bumps. Just off my gas, no braking needed, just off my gas. Go, and then just back on my gas, just in between each speed bump. Right, so there's a little bit of road works coming up just in the middle, and I'm just approaching here a mini roundabout. The blue sign just on the left hand side here. Just hidden by the tree, you can just see it. I'm gonna turn right, I popped my signal on. I'm gonna drop it into one, because there's a car coming from my right. Now it's indicating left now, so I can go. And there's another one here, if you can see. Again, the blue sign's been twisted, if you look at the lamppost on the left. Carrying on ahead, there's no traffic from my right hand side to worry about, and I'm carrying on. Notice there, when I went ahead, the road bent slightly, but that doesn't mean I need to indicate left. So I'm increasing my speed now up to 30 mile an hour. Around about every five to 10 seconds, I'll just have a quick glance at my central mirror. I've got a red car behind me, but it's keeping its distance. It's okay at the moment. Just going up over the motorway bridge. Now I'm just gonna go downhill. I'm just gonna decelerate slightly to so just come off my gas. There's a warning sign of a pedestrian crossing, a zebra crossing, but I can see no pedestrians at all. Then I'm coming up to a roundabout, a little triangle sign on the left hand side coming up. I'm dropping down to gear two, off my clutch, looking to the right, looks clear. Keep a little bit on the outside, centre left mirror, indicate down to the left. Once I straighten the wheel, signal cancels. Okay, now if you can see up ahead, there's a bus in a bus stop just coming up. Now I'm just going to get to the right as much as I can, drop down to gear two. The bus is still indicating left, well now it's indicating right, so I'm just going to drop it into one, make it obvious that the, I want the, uh, the bus driver to drive off, off he goes, quick check of my mirror again, yep, the red car is still behind. Now, now I'm behind the bus directly, I'm just going to make sure I leave plenty of space in case the bus stops at another bus stop, okay. Uh, I've got a little sign there on the left, triangle sign, telling me the road narrows from the left. Must be some roadworks. Yeah, you can just see there's some cones there just on the left hand side. So I can just keep just a little bit more to the right just to avoid those cones. Yeah, quick glance at my mirror. Still got the same car behind. So you notice that just gone past the bus stop. So it just shows you the bus isn't going to stop at every bus stop. Right, now the bus is braking. Looks like there is a bus stop there. Yes, now it's indicating left. Now, the problem with this bus stop, if you look where the island is on the right hand side, doesn't give me any room to get through so it's a bit of an odd location to have a bus stop and then the island there so I'm gonna to have to stop here and just wait for the bus to drive off okay. keeping an eye on the bus's indicator maybe when its brake lights come off so there's its right indicator brake lights have come off quick check of my sensor and my right mirror because I'm just gonna to have to move around these roadworks on the left hand side the bus driver just flashing his hazards to thank me, even though that's not technically the highway code. Right, I'm going to take the next road on the right, check my centre right mirror, just moved into the box in the middle, no oncoming traffic, 
ease my car in. Right, now there was no 20 sign coming into this road, but if you, if you can see, I've got more speed bumps, and it looks like a residential sort of type area. So I'm gonna stick it as a 20 for now. So again, I'm just gonna decelerate in between the humps. Right, now I've got another meeting situation here, but this car is just gonna be past me before I get to this sort of turquoise colored car. Check my center right mirror, move out of doors with, Okay, now that lady there didn't see me, she just backed up a little bit. It's always the danger when you've got parked vehicles, they can hide vehicles coming out of side roads. But remember, you do have to be a little bit more understanding of the fact that if you can't see the driver of that car coming out, that means they can't see you as well. So it's a good thing to just ease off, check your central mirror, and prepare to let them out if they need to, particularly if they pull out and they're pretty much in your path. What that lady did was saw me and just sort of backed up and then just allowed me the space. So I'm still just increasing my speed in between the speed bumps to around about 20. And then I'll just decelerate slightly just before this next hump here. And there it is, a little bump over, and then increase again. Park vehicles on the left, so just take my centre right mirror, just drift out of our doors with the way. Just gonna wait for this red one to appear in my left mirror. There it is, and I just drift back more to the left hand side. Couple more park vehicles, well white one coming up in a van, so again check my centre right mirror, creep out. Now I'm just gonna hold back for this car that's coming, drop to one. Now it's clear, check my centre right, and out I go. So I didn't feel there was room there. With that van, it was a bit bigger than the previous vehicle, and it wasn't half on the kerb like the previous vehicle was. Okay, this one, yeah, this looks fine. That black car's just passed, centre right mirror, and ease round. Okay, so if you're ever unsure about the space, best just to hold back, particularly if the part vehicle is on your side of the road, because that would mean you would have to drive onto the oncoming car side of the road, and that doesn't give you the priority. And again, just ease off for the speed bump, here we go, increase again in between. I've been glancing at my mirror again every 5-20 seconds, got nobody behind me at the moment. see you've got a couple more part vehicles coming up quite a few on either side so again center right mirror just nudge to the middle now I can see there's a few oncoming cars now now looking at they're only parked cars on my side and half on the curb so at the moment there is space for me to fit through the middle it's going a little bit slower just because the space is reduced okay so reduced space on the road always um, equals reduced speed okay after the blue car appears in my left mirror, no more parked vehicles, so I could increase my speed up towards 20, and again just decelerate for this speed bump coming up. Right, next here I had the road bends to the left, it's a bit downhill, so I'm just going to come off my gas again, no need to brake, oh I'll have to brake a little bit. That white van was just turning on my side of the road there, just turned a little bit early. So just show you that, because I was already easing off and slowing down, that was, that was easily um, sort of adjusted and prepared for that situation. Okay, I'm gonna turn right here, centre right mirror, upon my signal on, just let that truck go past. Couple of checks right and left both turn. Yep, looks clear this time. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn left. Notice the upside down triangle and the two lines of dotted lines, the two rows indicates give way. Right, now there's quite a few vehicles coming from our right hand side at the moment. So I've stopped and just popped my handbrake on. A few cars generally qualifies as three or more. That's when I normally recommend sticking the handbrake on. Right, now I'm gonna go, you can't see, but there's a big truck trying to turn into the side road. So that gives me, because they have to go slow and quite wide, that gives me plenty of time. Even though those vehicles behind the truck, the truck had to take a long time to turn there, so it was okay to pull out. Right, back onto what looks more like a 30 mile an hour road now. So I've increased my speed up to 30. Nobody at the crossing who's pressed the button, so there's no dangers there. Now check the centre right mirror, nudge around this truck on the left hand side, and check for it in my left mirror, and just return back to my side of the road. Right, now up ahead I have some red traffic lights, and I'm going to turn right. So I'm checking my centre right mirror, just nudging my position more to the centre of the road. 
pop my signal on after checking my center right mirror again there. Right, now, as you're looking up ahead, I can go into the yellow markings that are in the middle. It's called a box junction because my exit road is clear. I'm going to turn near side to near side with the van. I'm just creeping to try and get some view around the side. It looks like there's a few cars. My view's not great. Okay, now they can see the traffic light just changing, set my gas, no one's coming through, off I go. I need to get mid clear of that middle area quite promptly because the other traffic from the right and left will be moving soon. Okay, again, looks like a normal 30 mile an hour road, so just increasing my speed. It's a bit downhill, so you don't need too much gas. The hill does a lot of it for you. Okay, I'm gonna move slightly more to the left now. Now that cycle lane has actually gone onto the pavement. Okay, which does happen on certain, in certain areas. Still checking my rear every five to eight seconds. Yeah, nobody behind me at the moment. Just keeping it around about 30 miles an hour. All right, now coming up to roundabout, this one, because it, it's around the bend, there's a triangle sign just on the left. It actually says 100 yards, so it gives me a distance warning, which is not always the case. So here's the mini roundabout, so I'm just slowing down just below 20 mile an hour, drops a gear two off my clutch, look ahead and right a couple of times, yep, no need to give way, nobody there. Okay, increase my speed back to 30. It says slow on the road, probably because I'm downhill, Okay, so it's in warning me that if you increase my speed, too much gas, I can increase and suddenly go above 30. So I'm just, just raining the gas in a little bit than if I was on a flat road. Okay. So approaching a bend, looks quite gradual. There's a sign on the left warning me that the, bends, the road's going to bend right, then left. So I've got at least two or three bends coming up. Right. Now just under here then, there are 240 signs, quite well hidden by the trees on the left, but the one on the right is fairly clear. Okay, so I'm going to increase my speed. Triangle sign on the right one of me of the road liable to flooding. Okay, so I'm up to 40 mile an hour now. It's probably a 40 because there's not really many houses on this stretch. As you can see, there are a few trucks on the right parked in a little depot there. Um, there's a couple of little businesses on the left hand side as well, but it's, it's pretty clear of houses, so it's safer to do a higher speed. Right, now coming up, a few triangle signs warning me again, road liable to flooding, a sharp left bend, and there's a 30 sign just coming up here. Probably because now you can probably see there's quite a few more houses up ahead in the distance, so it wouldn't be safe now to do 40 mile an hour. Okay, right, so drops it to 30. Again, there's nobody behind me still. Now there's a mini roundabout coming up shortly. There's a sign on the left hand side. Now it's not a triangle warning like some of the others. This one gives me directions. So I'm gonna follow where it says Manchester, which was turning left. Okay, so center and left mirror, pop my signal down. A little bit of break, below 20 mile an hour, drop to gear two, off my clutch. Looking ahead's fine, looking to the right. Ooh, I'm just gonna wait, there's a white van. You can just see just passing me in front of me now. Nothing else coming. Off I go. Wasn't the best sighting on the approach there because obviously I had the buildings on the right which had uh, sort of fences and hedges blocking my view. So, so that's why it's important to drop down to gate two below 20 mile approaching roundabouts just in case you need to stop, particularly with mini roundabouts because your view can be restricted. Okay, checking my central mirror, bit of break. And it looks like even though the lights are on green up ahead, it looks like there's a little bit of a queue. Okay, so I've just slowed it down. I've popped it into neutral, and then I've just put the handbrake on, just come off my pedals for a little bit. With this kind of situation, I'm presuming there is some kind of maybe roadwork system up ahead where there's some temporary traffic lights. Because you can see the lights are on green, but the traffic is at a standstill. So that normally suggests there's some kind of obstruction up ahead. So what I'll do, I'll just briefly just pause the video now I'm in the queue, and I'll just set play again once we're driving off again. Okay, and off we go. Right, so you can see up ahead, it's still quite slow moving. Every single car ahead of you, if you look, has got the brake lights on. So that's the red lights, one on each side and one at the top of the windscreen, which forms, like if you draw the lines dots together, it forms a red triangle. So a red triangle is a hazard. 
Okay, right, yeah, I can see some signs coming up ahead now for the temporary traffic lights, some roadwork signs there, and they're back on red again. Okay, so brake and clutch as I'm coming to a stop. Let's get myself positioned just slightly right in the van, just so I've got a little bit of view just round the side. Yep, I can still see the traffic light. Okay, handbrake and neutral again. Popping into neutral is a good thing in my car because what it does, it has stop start technology. So it temporarily turns the engine off. What that's good for, obviously, is saving on some fuel as well. Also, it helps to save on the emissions coming out the back of the car. It's obviously better for the environment. It's also good to put the handbrake on when you're in a queue because if you're sat on the foot brake constantly, firstly, you are using the brake, which means you're using the brake pads so they are being worn, potentially overheated. Um, secondly, your brake lights at the back are constantly on, all right? So what the highway code what does warn sometimes, particularly at night, because brake lights can't bright you, you can dazzle the person behind you a little bit and distract them with those brake lights. So that's one reason. The second reason is just essentially just to preserve the bulbs, okay? Because the more you use something, obviously the more it's going to get worn, um, so you'd have to replace those bulbs a lot sooner. Okay. So still waiting here, still got a decent view round the side. Um, not re you don't really see within the camera angle there what's going on, but there's a few cones just on the left hand side, uh, a few men at work. It's quite a long stretch actually, it's probably a good, I'd say a good 100, maybe 150 yard stretch. Um, so that's why I'm having to wait a little while here, because obviously if, if cars are coming the other way, and it's a 100, 150 yard stretch, you need to make sure they can get back onto our side of the road, their own side of the road. Right, I'm just going to pause the video again just briefly, just while I'm waiting, um, and play it again when I get moving. Okay, welcome back. Slight malfunction on the uh, the old clamp on my phone then. Um, it just fell off the window, so I've just reset now. Right, so I'm now on a dual carriageway. It's a 40 mile an hour dual carriageway. Right, now up ahead, the lights are on red, but there's a lot of traffic in this lane. So what I'm gonna to do to make a bit of progress, I'm just gonna hop over to the right hand lane, carrying on ahead. So I've checked my center right mirror, my indicated, and I've just checked my right blind spot before I've moved over. I've got into this lane because there's no point in staying in the left hand lane and staying all the way behind all that line of traffic. If the right hand lane's free, I can just make a little bit of progress down the road, okay? Okay, so we're on green, building the speed back up towards 40 mile an hour. Now, speed on dual carriageways is a common misconception that a dual carriageway is always a speed limit that's higher than uh, 30 mile an hour, which is your most common speed limit on most roads. Now, it is a common misconception. Um, the speed on a dual carriageway can be anything from 20 up to 70 mile an hour. So if you ever get a question on the theory, anything that says, what is the national speed limit on a dual carriageway? That's if you see the white sign with the black diagonal line. It's basically the speed limit is just like a motorway, which is 70 miles per hour. Okay, right. Now I'm staying in the right hand lane because they're, we're doing the speed limit 40, but the traffic in the left hand lane are pretty much doing 40 as well. You can't really see it in the camera, but there's something in my left blind spot, like a big blue truck, that's not really safe for me to move back. Plus, I'm also turning right at these traffic lights up ahead. So, centre right mirror, you can see where my lay by starts there. So, I've held my speed as I've come in. Now, once I'm in, I could cancel it for now, the signal, because there's a little while to wait. Brake, then clutch. I'm not going to bother down gearing because my lights are still on red. The traffic for ahead and left are on green, if you notice, but I'm on red. So, I'm just going to pop it into neutral. Stop so I can just see the tyres of the car in front and the tarmac on the road. Right, I'm back on green now, so back into gear one. I'll reapply my signal. Okay. Now, as you can see, my traffic light's a green arrow pointing to the right. So that's a filter arrow. So that tells me the traffic ahead of me have already gone to red. 30 mile an hour sign just on the left. So I'm back on a dual, uh, off the dual carriage onto a single carriageway. Okay, center right mirror to go around this obstruction. Okay. Just going to nudge slightly to the left around this white car that's turning right. Just checked my centre and my left mirror just before. Right, just increase my speed back to 30 now. 
Sharp ride bend sign on the left hand side there. So I'll just drop slightly below 30 mile an hour. Just decelerate slightly, there's no need to brake. Yeah, it's not too bad a bend. Now I'm around the bend, just increase back to 30. So I only dropped around about 27, 28 for that bend. So this road as you can see, residential, but it's a main road, so it's not a 20 mile an hour area. There's no signs to tell me. Any road which has no signs but street lamps is 30 miles per hour. And it's warning sign on the left, warning me of a side road on the right. It's actually the entrance and the exit to a golf club, okay? But obviously I have the right of way. Okay. Right, now I'm approaching a roundabout, but before the roundabout, if you look ahead, I can, you can see some flashing amber lights on top. This is a bin truck. Okay, so I've checked my centre right mirror. I'm just going to move myself to the middle of the road. Car in front's just gone round. There's no one come. Oh, there is a big truck. So you know it's there. I committed as late as I could. I didn't see the big truck because of the bend until quite late. So I've just stopped here for now. Right, I'm looking for a gap after the van. Looks okay. Yep, yeah, centre right. I can make it just before this truck was coming. And then check my left mirror for the bin truck as I come. Right, I'm going to go left first exit, following Swinton and Eccles. Centre and left mirror, pop my signal down. Now I'm already in two, gentle bit of brake. Just looking to the right and there's a few cars coming, so it's going to drop into one. Okay, right, I can see a gap coming, yep, kept it rolling, off I go. Right, so I'm just staying in the left hand lane here, you can see there's quite a bit of traffic in the right hand lane. The right hand lane at the next roundabout, which is coming to Charlotte, only goes right onto the motorway, okay? But the roundabout coming, what it does, it'll split. There's two lanes at the moment, but it'll split to three lanes. Now this is one where the left lane goes left only, but I'm going ahead, so I'm gonna pick up the central lane. Let's try and keep an eye on the arrows on the floor. You can just see the straight ahead arrow there. So, drop to two, glance into the right, looks clear. Maintaining my middle lane position. There's a straight arrow again. Level with the first exit, center left mirror, pop my signal down. Okay, right. So I've exited the roundabout road, looks okay. So I'll get it into gear three and I'll stick it around about the mid 20s for now, around about 25. Okay, nobody's pressed the button on the pedestrian crossing, so there's no dangers there. Warning sign on the left of a hump to pedestrian crossing, so this one's a zebra. So no traffic lights to tell me to go or stop here, but there are no pedestrians on either side. So away I go. All right, it's only a small hump that one, so I've stayed around about the mid twenties. Now just increase my speed back towards thirty. Right now the bend coming up. Notice this part vehicles on the right, so I'm going to nudge a little bit closer to the left curb just to give the oncoming cars some space. And now there's none. I can just move my position back more to the centre. So it's a good thing to do when there's parked vehicles on the other side of the road because you've got to anticipate if any vehicles come the other way they're going to move more to the middle which is more to your side so it's a good idea just to nudge to the left just as a courtesy really just to give them some more space because you would like the same courtesy in the, in the, if the situation was reversed. Okay. Checking my central mirror, I've got a car behind me that's keeping me its distance, it's not tailgating me, keeping up at the speed limit at 30 mile an hour. Right, now the road up ahead, there's a couple of parked vehicles, not just on one side, on both. So, I've checked my central mirror, and I've just eased off to the mid-twenties, right? Now, there's a police car just coming up. Not much, really, I can do, because it's on the other side. I've just eased off. The car on the other side, if you notice, moved in to the curb to let them pass. So, I just eased off, because there was no real need for me to move into the left, because they had already left the police car enough space. Right, now, notice there's a big bus coming, so I'm just going to nudge in to the left. Okay, ooh, the bus is actually letting me go. So I've checked my centre on my right. Just thanks for the courtesy. So in that scenario, I anticipate the bus would just come through because it's bigger than me and the road was too narrow. But the bus actually had the same idea as me and was actually willing to let me go as well. So that was both of us essentially being safe. What you cannot do though as a driver is assume that the other car will always let you go through because what if the other driver assumes the same of you? Assumes you're gonna wait. And you're just going to come unstuck if you have that mentality every single time. So if you always have the mentality of being a more defensive driver and willing to be the one who gives way, I guarantee you will avoid most accidents if you do that. Okay. 
So the traffic lights are on green up ahead, just the traffic's taking a little while to get going. So I'm just holding it in gear one for now. Okay, it's moving quite nicely now. The way I go up to two. Okay, just gonna be wary the lights might change. Yeah, that's fine, I'm committed now. Good. I can enter the yellow markings because my exit road is clear. The road ahead. Now the car ahead of me, I think it's turning right. No, it's not indicating. I'm just gonna check my centre and left. Just move around them slightly. Go. So yeah, I can anticipate the car ahead was turning right, even though it wasn't indicating right, because of its positioning over to the right, it had actually gone over the central line slightly, but it was also braking, so that suggested they were slowing down to turn, even though they weren't indicating. Okay. And it's speed, I'm keeping it again around the mid-20s, just around these bends. I've got a biggish truck on the left, if you notice there. Alright, so I'm going to check my centre right, just creep out to the middle, I'll drop my speed down to around about 20. Just for this bend, just holding it steady. There we go. Left mirror for that truck. Right, there we go. So I've increased my speed a little bit more now. Right, there's a set of traffic lights just coming up. They're on green. Check my central mirror in case they change. Yeah, I'm committed now. That is fine. So approaching green lights, always be wary that they could change. Um, so always check your central mirror for proximity of any cars that may be behind you and what speed they're doing. And always pick a point where you think, Right, well I'm beyond that point now, I'm committed, I now cannot stop if it goes to amber, okay? Then you're always prepared for that scenario. There's a warning sign on the left of elderly people, so there must be some kind of care home potentially nearby. Another warning sign there of a bendy road up ahead, so the road's going to bend first to the right, followed by the left. If you look ahead, there are a black and white sign, which is called chevrons, just warning me again that the road bends to the right, because there's a road on the left there that you could mistake potentially which way the road goes without that sign. So again, around the double bends, I'm sticking around about the middle 20s again, around about 25. Okay, now looking up ahead, I can see a red traffic light. A few cars, I'm off my gas now, I'm not braking yet. Drop down to two below 20 mile an hour, so I'm not touching my brake yet, I've just eased off, I'm letting the engine do the work, it's called engine braking. I'm now below 10, so I'm just going to stick it into gear 1, leave my clutch down, and just roll slowly up. Now, I'm only touching the brake now, just to stop the car from rolling back, because I'm on a bit of an incline. So, popped my handbrake on, put my right foot over the gas, popped it into neutral. I've got a good view of that red light just around the side of the van. That's just gone to green, into gear 1, set a bit more gas for the hill. Make sure I've got my biting point, handbrake off. So always give it a little bit more gas on an uphill. Remember, you're driving a heavy car. Oops, just gone to amber. That was a bit of a quick light, but I was ready. So I didn't even get a chance to get into two there. So yeah, back to the previous point. Lots more gas, well, lot, lots more. Say around about 1,500, maybe a touch more, maybe between the sort of 1,500 and 2,000 revs. So when you're driving a heavy car, a lot of cars, most cars are one to two tons of metal, sometimes more. So it, laws of physics, you need a bit more power to get help the car get up the hill comfortably, okay? So I'm back into neutral again, just with the handbrake on. Oh, just changed to green. Again, lots more gas. Hold my bike for three seconds. There we go. And I'm away. Okay. okay. The road, it doesn't look like the widest road, but I'm still into gear three. Again, I'm going to stick around about the mid-twenties for now. Just going to wait for these parked vehicles on the right and the red car to go past me. Okay, right, a bit more space now, so I'm just going to increase my speed up towards 30. Right, a little bit of a bend coming up, so I'm going to check my central mode. Just decelerate slightly, just while I move around this right and left bend. Good, right, increase again. bend coming up so again just glance at my mirror just decelerate slightly again no braking involved here just e decelerating in good time is just as effective it doesn't keep using your brake pads and your brake lights as well right now up ahead lights are on red so i'm completely off my gas still i'm not braking yet i'm below 20 so i'll drop to two slowly off my clutch now just start tapping the brake now i'm a bit downhill clutch again now i'm at just below 10 i'll pop the car into one. Right, I'm just going to pause a few seconds, see if the lights change. Nope, pop my handbrake on. 
Right, now if you notice, the car's opposite are moving, so they must have a green arrow filter. So I'm gonna leave it in gear one. I'm turning left, so I can pop my signal off, checking my center left, handbrake off first, because I was on a downhill this time. Right, into two, not much gas here, because it's quite a big downhill swing on this turn, so I'm just letting the car do the work. Now I've got straight, add me accelerate. Notice it's a low bridge, 3.5 meters. I'm not that high, so I'm okay to fit. Okay, a bit more gas up the hill. Now that car's gone past, and then into three. Right, now I'm just gonna park up on the right-hand side of the road. I'm gonna indicate, check my right blind spot, start to move into the right, bring it round parallel to the curb, and stop. Okay, neutral and handbrake. Okay, hope you enjoyed that video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel for all future videos. Thanks again, bye for now.